this chamber of commerce is encouraging and asking that you do what you can to appeal to keep this thing from happening in our community. This Chamber of Commerce is here to pledge to you their wholehearted support, be it financial, moral, or any other way. Please don't let us down. Thank you. This past year, I had the privilege of sending my grandson from my home at the paid tuition rate uh, to a junior high school in the eighth grade, and I know what the exposures and what the facts are with reference to the need for careful consideration of that youngster, not only checking with the other parent, as it might relate to drug abuse. This is a very serious problem, and I am afraid that it could become a significant one if this program is continued. These are the effects of the educational process. Now, as a businessman and as a chamber representative, I want to talk to you briefly about the economic effects as a shareholder in two major business operations in Eau Claire. No person, and I say that advisedly, with school children who could afford otherwise will want to remain in an area that discriminates against their children as does this plan. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll gain injunctive relief uh, against implementing the now in force desegregation plan, which was entered August the 2nd of this year. Uh, as to that section of Dallas, which is in the Kimball Carter South Oak Cliff area and areas adjacent thereto, uh, because those areas uh, were, and I use the word discriminated against because that seems to be the adjective used in most of these things, in that uh, their uh, children, black and white and brown and mixed, have to undergo busing twice as many students in that area than in all the other areas of the city of Dallas combined.
There continues to be an encouraging trend in the number of persons being added to the welfare rolls in Texas. During the last half of last year and the first couple of months of this year, 12 or 13,000 persons were added to the rolls each month, primarily in aid to families with dependent children. But beginning in April of this year, there were only 8,000 persons added. In May, the increase was 5,000. In June, 5,700. Preliminary figures being worked on now here at the Texas Department of Public Welfare for July indicates the increase will be less than 5,000 for the first time in a long time. Jerry Chapman, Assistant Commissioner of Public Welfare, believes that we are reaching the bottom of the reservoir of persons who are eligible. He said that although the number of persons getting on the rolls has been much less, that the number of applications continues at the same high level. We have had no major change in our method of uh, checking eligibility. Um, I think that the same number of people continuing to apply indicates that the fraud investigations has not dramatically affected it. I think, again, it's that we're starting to hit the bottom of the barrel. Is this only in Texas? No, this is a nationwide trend. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, in meeting with some of the other state commissioners of public welfare, uh, they all tell us that their volume of applications continue the same, but the percentage of people eligible is dropping dramatically across the nation. Officials had earlier predicted that they would have to begin cutting the amount of welfare checks by the end of this year. They now say, however, that these encouraging trends in the welfare figures will probably put off that decrease in checks until sometime next year. But just when depends on how the trend goes in the coming months. This is Austin McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move in Austin. That's an out and out lie. We're committed to no candidate and no party. Uh, we can be nonpartisan, but that doesn't restrict us to non-issue, of course. It's unfair to call it a dumb Nixon campaign. Some people have. Uh, we're simply trying to find the candidates that are responsive to the American needs and the American will, and those candidates we hope to support of 1972. Most of the citizens of Oak Hill feel like they've been discriminated against because the school board has picked one small section of their, our city of Dallas <coughs> and, uh, and trying to, uh, this busing out more than they are in the rest of the city. Mr. Carpenter, have you discussed this with representatives of the black community and if so, who? Beg your pardon? Have you discussed this with representatives of the black community in Oak Cliff and if you have... No, I have not. How do you claim to speak for the black citizens of Oak Cliff? Well, uh, if you could uh, answer a few thousand telephone calls the last few days, you would know. Now, you are, however, a little bit nervous about one court decision that is pending? Yes, sir. Uh, as you know, the Supreme Court has ruled that a state may not deny people because they are not citizens of the United States. Uh, this has not yet been implemented in Texas, although we have a 
pending federal court suit against us in Houston, which is to be heard the 9th of uh, August, I believe. And at that time, we anticipate that the federal court will uh, require us to do away with our citizenship requirement. Will this bring an automatic jump in the welfare rolls? Yes, it should bring a, a larger reservoir of people who are potentially eligible, and I'm sure they will come in and apply. Is there any projection as to how large a number of people might go on the rolls because of that? No, sir, this is very difficult to evaluate. Uh, even the information we get from the Naturalization Service indicates uh, some question about the number of such people in Texas. There were nine witnesses appearing before this grand jury last week. The probe is expected to continue on August the 17th when Frank Sharp himself will come to appear. In the meantime, a federal grand jury continues its investigation in Houston into some of the same matters that the Travis County Grand Jury is looking into here. After Osorio gave his testimony, which was nearly three hours long, to the grand jury, he conducted an impromptu 30-minute news conference covering a wide range of subjects. Were these transactions in the stock carried on, were you, you were aware of the interest in the legislation, the banking legislation at the same time? No, it wasn't. As far in my opinion, as far as I was concerned, there was no connection between the stock transactions and the legislative bill. Did you work on passage of the legislation too? Yes. Very little because I couldn't find anybody against the bill. I, I feel that Dr. Baum and Governor Smith have been treated uh, unfairly in this case. I think a great injustice has been done to them. Uh, anytime you have an economic failure of the type that we had, uh, some people are going to get hurt. And, uh, I feel very strongly uh, that uh, people have tried to draw Dr. Baum into some, or inferred some misdeeds, and uh, I certainly didn't see them at the time, I don't see them now. What was the nature of your dealings with Dr. Baum and Governor Smith in regard to this stock? And I highly recommended the stock. And, uh, I'm sorry? I highly recommended the stock. I thought the stock was a good buy. As president of the company, I thought it was going to be a good company. This is Ross McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move in Austin. mount that on the hatch, the command module hatch, with both cameras pointed toward the service module where I'll be working. Once that's accomplished, then I'll go very slowly down the handrails to the service module, staying away from the reaction control system engines or uh, quads, which are just off the side of the path of the EVA, go down to the service module, uh, get uh, situated in the EVA restraint boots, which are located on one side of the service module. And once in that position, then I'll remove the thermal and contamination covers from the, mat or from the pan camera cassette first. Once they're removed, I'll pull the cassette out of its bay, tether it to, my, to, the, to the left wrist, and then very slowly uh, come back the handrails, back to the command module, um, stow the cassette inside the command module where Dave Scott will uh, keep track of it and hold it until the end of the EVA. Then I'll go back down the handrails and essentially repeat that process with, uh, with the mapping camera cassette, tethering it to my left wrist and bringing you called for calm simply because you live in a white dynasty of North Dallas, and why shouldn't you be calm? How would you answer that? Well, first of all, I don't think I live in a white dynasty of North Dallas. My, uh, my oldest boy uh, was accepted to Skyline High School, which is some 35% black, and that was one of the reasons he said he wanted to transfer to that high school before all of this came up. 
so I don't feel that's quite fair. In Lake Highlands, which is part of my immediate district, uh, they have had completely integrated uh, schooling for the last uh, two years, I believe, and there's been no problem whatsoever. That is the part of Lake Highlands that is in the Richardson School District. I would point out, however, to you that my three children, as has been asked of me so many times, attend Dallas Public Schools. Spacecraft Center Houston, Worden practiced this maneuver underwater. We asked him to describe his plan. Well, I think the strength of our squad probably would be in our offensive backs. Uh, I think that probably we got uh, oh, as many as four or five uh, real outstanding running backs, uh, which is very unusual to have that many, I think, uh, on one all-star ball club. You got a quarterback that can throw the ball good? Yes, uh, I think uh, the Presley boy, although he's not noted as a passer, I know uh, from having played against him that he can throw the ball real adequate. And then uh, the Bobby Lawfrey from Dumas uh, has uh, his statistics are real good throwing the football. So I think we could be able to move the ball throwing, uh, and I imagine we'll probably have to throw the ball some. How many touchdowns do you think will be scored in this game? Is it going to be a high score? That's a <laughs> that would be a wild guess in an all-star game. Uh, uh, many uh, breaks and so forth like that will figure into it, but uh, I, let's just take a guess. I'd say uh, four to three, and uh, hopefully North gets four of them. Well, we've got a little bit of speed. Uh, the Fraser boy from Lorelina Park runs a 9-700, and, and the Leak boy, uh, Leak's boy from Brenham is a 210-pounder, and he runs a 10-flat, so I believe that uh, they can run pretty good. You don't have much time before the Thursday night game. What will be some of your main drilling points between now and then? The thing that we're really going to have to decide on between now and then is uh, who's going to play offense and who's going to play defense. And uh, I feel like by uh, Sunday we will pretty well have that set. What type of formation will you be running offensively? We're going to run the pro set, and uh, we're going to throw the football. And you, as you know, the record in the high school football here in the state in the all-star game is 26. So we'll probably break that the first half. The Oak Cliff Chamber of Commerce, as representative of these residents, therefore resolves as follows. One, that the Board of Trustees of Dallas Independent School District immediately affects its appeal from the order of the court, insisting upon approval of its original plan submitted to the trial court. And in the alternative, if such be an error, the adoption of a plan equitable to all areas of the district. And two, that the Supreme Court of the United States be immediately petitioned by the board to stay the order of the trial court pending an appeal.
find out what uh, this afternoon what the uh, regulations are in regard to these uh, definitions. These new, some of these new definitions have been added. This is one of about 50 classes to be held all over Texas to educate Department of Public Safety patrolmen in the new law. In its last session, the state legislature completely revised the Texas Uniform Highway Regulations so that state traffic ordinances would approach a national standard. As a result, about 107 pages of highway laws were revised. As a result, DPS patrolmen are going through 16 hours of training. I asked patrolman Jerry Watson if he thinks the training will help him do a better job. Well, Jay, of course, this updates my training and improves my ability to uh, enforce the law accurately and legally. What about people who have not been advised of the changes in the law? What should they do? Well, Jay, the average citizen needs to uh, keep a watch on the news media, the television, radio, and newspaper over the next uh, month or two. Uh, and be advised of the new laws uh, that they come up with. Uh, they will be assisting us and uh, the general public with the new laws. Well, what about a person that you stop on a violation that didn't used to be a violation that he might not have heard about the changes? Well, for the first uh, month or two or three, we will be issuing some warnings on the newer laws and some of the changes in the old laws. The changes involve virtually every aspect of motoring in Texas. As an example, it used to be that within city limits, a motorist could stop behind a school bus and then proceed around the bus. That's no longer true. Now you must remain stopped until the driver signals you to pass him or until the lights on the bus go out. In addition, there's virtually a new book on towing a trailer and the equipment necessary to do so. The 50 states are still not completely together on their laws, but they're close. So there may come a day when you don't have to worry about getting arrested in Oklahoma for something that's legal in Texas. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. I certainly don't feel Judge Taylor has uh, discriminated against any section of the city intentionally, and uh, I think the living patterns in this particular neighborhood have a lot to do uh, with the way the thing has come out. I do feel there must be an answer to the problem, and I, again, I would say that if Mr. Holland and Mr. Gilmore, who are most intimately acquainted with this area, can sit together with a tri-ethnic committee along with myself, uh, that we can help uh, the people involved to work it out. No, it is not a surprise to me. Uh, as I have been reading the statements made by the president that uh, he is discouraging the expenditure of federal funds for busing, uh, we anticipated that we would have to lean upon the state of Texas on our local funds. Do you feel that you will be able to get the funds from local and state sources? We shall do everything humanly possible to get them and get them as soon as possible at a special call me meeting of the legislature or otherwise. We will do everything possible to get them as soon as possible. Uh, during the testimony in court, Ms. Green, we, we talked about an increase in our school taxes to pay for a number of these programs. Would busing expenses come out of that, or would it call for additional tax increases? <clears throat> That's a question that the board asked the superintendent to inquire into last Monday. We also instructed the superintendent to look for every possible source to fund these additional costs other than out of any additional taxes. Apparently, with the precedent for busing coming out of the U.S. Supreme Court, where do you yourself feel the money should come from? If the federal government ordered it, I think it should come from the federal government. 